Today's guest is Reed Davis. He's the founder of Functional Diagnostic Nutrition. They are very well known in the health space. They have over 3,000 graduates in 50 countries. Um, they do a lot of lab testing. I love anybody I meet who has done FDN. They're always awesome. They're always smart. They're always um, open-minded and really hungry for more. That's kind of my vibe from FDN people. So it's, I had a, Reed had some street cred with me before I even met him. I was like, your people are awesome. It's reflective of what you're doing. Um, so a little bit about Reed. He's a board certified holistic health practitioner and certified nutritional therapist. He is an expert in functional lab testing and holistic lifestyle medicine. And as we got into this episode today, it was super fun for me because obviously, I mean, I think a lot of you probably know I do lab testing also in my coaching. And so just to be able to sit down with Reed, who has been doing this for so long and has created such an incredible business and certification around it, I'm like, tell me all your wisdom. So sharing that with you guys today, um, I hope you guys enjoy, please heads up the sound is a little different because we recorded this at biohacking Congress. Um, but yeah, I think you guys will get a lot of value out of this episode today. So here is Reed Davis. All right. I'm here at biohacking Congress, Miami with Reed Davis, the founder of functional diagnostic nutrition. Um, we've got over 30 experts here, amazing experts on bio biohacking health and longevity. We've got over 30 expo vendors here. It's an amazing experience. Um, if you guys weren't able to come to this one, highly recommend checking out their next one. It's going to be in Austin in February. So check that out. Reed. All right. All right. Let's get nerdy. You okay. ready? We're going to okay. talk about All right. So first, I, I wanted to talk about, I want people to hear your message of metabolic chaos. I love this because I find that in the health field, even in holistic health, we can get into almost the same energy as Western medicine, even though we kind of don't want yeah. to admit it. It's like, oh, you have this thing. So your vitamin D was low and like, that's it. Take this supplement and like the problem solved without yeah. looking at it holistically. And I know you guys do it really different. So could you talk about the concept of metabolic chaos and why sure. you call it that? Yeah, thanks. So, I mean, I could go way back and uh, tell you where this came from, but in short, um, most Western medicine is based on reductionism. Yeah. And like you said, even functional medicine, they're bound by the same licensure requirements, standard of care and rules and insurance payments and all this stuff. So even though they're practicing functional medicine, they're supposed to get at the underlying causes. Yeah. They can only go so far upstream yeah. before they get cut off and their standard of care is like, well, I have to diagnose and treat you right. for something. So they're going to pick something. Right. They're going to pick thyroid, yeah, low thyroid or right. little bowel or whatever it is. So in our world, which is more holistic, we want to take the bigger, broader approach. And oh, by the way, we're not bound by any of those standards of care because we're not licensed practitioners. Yeah. We really just have one concern. What's the underlying causes and conditions? Now, long history of looking for the root cause. So I ran lab after lab after lab. Matter of fact, I ran over 10,000 labs on thousands of people looking for that elusive root cause. Mm -hmm. What I figured out is that you're not always going to find it. For one thing, it's really tricky. It can be way upstream from where the symptoms are occurring. So you think, oh, these symptoms, it must be a parasite. No, no parasite. Oh, it must be this. Oh, no, it wasn't that either. So what we learned to do is look way upstream for a whole constellation of healing opportunities. So, and then what do you find? Metabolic chaos, it's the only thing yeah. you can call it. Right. It's all these dysfunctions within the hormone system, the immune system. There's digestion. Oh, how about detoxification? Right. Energy production on a cellular level. You have nervous system balance, autonomic, sympathetic. So when you have all of those things, and all or many have imbalances and things that need to be corrected. In other words, these are healing opportunities. What are you going to diagnose that? It's just metabolic care. Yeah. It just, it's, that's it's what it mess. is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it, and so when you say look for the root cause, that's a good thing to have in your mind. You're looking, right. and you might find something right there sitting there that, oh, that was caused. But more likely in chronic degenerative downward spiraling conditions, what people are showing up with, they're showing up with chronic fatigue and irritable right. bowel. You know, so they have all these things. Fibromyalgia was very popular when I first started. Yeah. And so you've, you've got multiple complaints, overweight and can't lose it, and they're 
constipated and they feel sad and you know, just on and on and on. How are you gonna pick one lab? Yeah, right. You can't. So, so I, I would also have to explain that I didn't figure this out overnight. Yeah. It took ten years running thousands of labs and thousands of people, and I had great mentors, but I also was good at recognizing patterns. Yeah. And all the women came in, coming in our office were getting well on the system. Wow, this is really working. Can I bring my husband? Can I bring my kids? And so we figured this is just how things work. And I love how it, like you're you talk about having the basics in place, right? Like having a lifestyle that's leading to health, but also not neglecting the fact that hey, there might be something actionable that we can find through doing some lab testing. Can you talk about how you balance that in terms yeah. of like, because obviously if somebody is never exercising, sleeping horribly, you know, uh, has toxic relationships, has horrible self-talk, you know, all of these things, drinking soda all day, and it's like, well, mm. we can raise your vitamin D, but like, yeah. you know, how do you balance the lifestyle and the diagnostic testing? You know what I mean? That's how does a, that work that's for a, the person? That's a really good question, you know, and I'm just pondering as you were, as you're putting it together there, the people have to want. Yeah. It. So you're looking really for health seekers. Yeah. And not everyone is, unfortunately. Right. I go back even further to like, well, who should be in control of your health? You? Yes. Or the TV? <laughs> right. Or the doctor? Right. Or the university? Or the, the hospital? Or who should be in control of one's health is that person, me. Right. I want to be in control of mine. That's right. what got me into business in the first place. Yeah. And so, uh, there's a mental, emotional component there of right. recognizing that, hey, you know what, this isn't normal. Uh, we go to a physician and you might get told it is normal. You know, they run a test, they go, oh, your blood work looks right. fine, uh, here's your chill pill. Or, this is your or, normal. You know, <laughs> go do some diet and exercise. Right, right. You know, and then, you, well, which diet? That one didn't work, and that one didn't work, and that one didn't work. And exercise hurts, and I got yeah. injured, and, you know, my personal trainer pushed me to, you know, whatever. So there's different strokes for different folks. Totally. The, the most important tenant of what we do is probably biochemical individuality. Yeah. Yeah. And that's that's a heavy duty uh, responsibility to say I think I can help you. Yeah. And you have to mean you, right. this one person. Right. Not I can help uh, the population because no one person is that population. Yeah. Everybody's an individual. Uh -huh. All medicine is basically studied on a cohort. In other words, oh, we tested 10,000, 50,000, or 50 people, and we found. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, this is kind of like going to help them, um, generally speaking. You know, or just, right. like it helped, it helped the cohort to some degree. And it doesn't have to be much of a degree to become an approved treatment or medication or something like that. It doesn't have to help everybody in the cohort. Right. Just enough of the cohort that, well, you know, generally speaking, you're better off with this medication than not. Bullshit. You know, it could kill you. And they tell you on TV, uh, may cause heartburn, diarrhea, right. indigestion, bloating, gas, Death. Uh, you know, bad skin, <laughs> icky right. joints, which is what you're taking it for in the first place, I by know. the way. And then and migraine headaches and, and on and on. So, yeah, suicidal tendencies. Yeah, yeah. So we, there's no such thing in our world as treating a cohort. Yeah. It's a biochemically individual individual person you know and, and that's mm -hmm. that's the hard part okay I gotta ask you your take on this because like I, I so relate there I have never coached two people exactly the same like you never it's, not, will. Yeah, it, it, it's nonsensical and so I'm curious your thoughts on this because I hear a lot of theory being preached uh, to the masses on social media. This is the way all people should eat. This is the way, you know, this is the best way to exercise. This is the best way, you, everyone needs magnesium or everyone needs this, you know? And I'm just, and, and, and it's, I think it's a confusing world for people because they listen to a podcast like this and somebody just very nuanced, in a very nuanced way drops how important vitamin D or zinc or something like that is. And that person, not you know, they're not. This isn't their life's work. They have their own career, and they're like, okay, yeah, vitamin D. Like I heard that specialist say that's really important. I guess I'll just start taking that. You know, mm. um, <laughs> I'm just curious your thoughts on like general recommendations on 
supplements or yeah. you know like basically because you're all lab based what are your, just tell me your thoughts I on can all speak that. to the um, issue which is um, diet and supplementation and those kind of things the, the truth claims being made yeah. by manufacturers or representatives and salespeople yeah. clerks in stores you have people saying um, you know this is good for this Right. And you go, oh, I, I have that. I should buy. And then, then this is good for this. Well, I've, I've got that too. You know, I have a heart. I have lungs, liver, pancreas, yeah. adrenals, ovaries, yeah. or testes. No one has both, thank God. But you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> so, so um, you know, we're all, we're all different. Yeah. And yes, we all have these needs, but they're so individually yeah. determined by genetics. Now, let me explain, if I could. So if, if that's true, that this is good for everybody, then it would be good for an Eskimo, and it would be good for a Quechua Indian from the Andes Mountains. And it would also be good for a Bantu a native tribesman in the middle of Africa. Well, that's completely untrue. We know that the same thing that this one eats, is, it poisons that one. Bantu are a tribe in Africa who, if you go there now and look, they look perfectly healthy tall, radiating health, good skin, clear clear teeth, and they, they know their stuff. They have a lot of tribal traditions. They're healthy, they're happy, they sing and dance and hunt and fish and all this different stuff. They gather, right? So, but their diet, and by the way, they uh, are very fertile people. You know, they're losing tribes people from uh, moving out of the situation, you know, modernized. That's why they move out, not because they can't reproduce and, and yeah. sustain a tribe. Yeah. Now, if you take those people and put them on in the, with the Quechuan Indians in the Andes Mountains, mm -hmm. who eat what? Potatoes, yeah. And corn. Yeah. yeah. Completely different diet. They're living at ten thousand feet. They're looking living at sea level. You got all these factors. The soils, meaning the the. Uh, the chemicals in the soils, the vitamins, the minerals, the essential fatty acids, trace elements, the uh, phytonutrients things, that are in those plants mm -hmm. and in the animals that eat those plants mm -hmm. and just in the dirt and mm -hmm. everything. That's what's bred into their bone over right. uh, 200,000 years. Right. No, that's a different combination of those micronutrients. That's what the, the again, the Quechuan Indians in the Andes. Mm -hmm. Different soil, different mm -hmm. climate, different, different Yeah, and yeah. what's in the plants. Right. And, and they're in different, they're the same things, vitamins, minerals, right. antioxidants, and so on, but they're different proportions. Right. The other thing that changes is the amount of protein, fat, and carbs. Mm -hmm. So what we determine these requirements on, to answer your question, and I'm sorry a long-winded way. I love it. Uh, is that um, you, we have different macronutrient ratios, amount of protein, fat, and carb, mm -hmm. and different ones. Which proteins, fats, and carbs, from where? Mm -hmm. You know, and do they have all those trace elements and phytonutrients mm -hmm. indigenous to my ancient ancestors? Because mm -hmm. that's what's bred into my genes and my bones. Mm -hmm. And so that's pretty hard to figure out. Well, which, <laughs> which one? So believe it or not, there's a way. We send people to mtdiet.com, but, um, but uh, you know, we respect that biochemical individuality. Yeah. And that's, first and foremost, I think, critical to what and, we do. And I so respect that and appreciate that because sometimes, I, I'm very tell it like it is, I, I, when I see people make, this is how everyone should be eating, my immediate thought was, you don't work with people one on one, do you? Because mm -hmm. you would have gotten your butt handed to you so many times. Time like, ago. you you just you find out. And I love that you say this. I love that you say, I don't know if I can help you. Let me see if I can help you. That's so amazing because it that that's it's just incredibly true. And I think it comes through years, decade plus of like trying things and finding out wow that didn't actually help that person i thought i had I, i've had that happen too i'm like i've got yeah. it figured out for this condition i've got it figured out for, and then it doesn't work on somebody i'm like dang it i yeah. don't have it figured out you know and so there is so much bio individuality you know somebody might have candida and not know it and somebody's like yep you should eat a high carb diet and they're like just feeding their candida like you know so there's yes. so much individuality yeah. on what we need there is uh, and it's interesting, And but as a practitioner, um, I started in the late 90s not knowing anything. Yeah. 
yeah. the good news of that is I didn't have to unlearn something. You know, like yeah. a system that someone yeah. else has. So I got to go into a clinic. No one gets this opportunity. And my job was to help people. Um, and I think I've told you this before. The first thing I noticed is they all tried everything. They already tried everything. So right. what's this guy going to do? And I luckily just stumbled on the lab work. So I started, instead of guessing or yeah. saying, well, have you tried the Atkins diet? That was right. really big that then. Yeah. Uh, back then, and uh, I would say, well, let's let me get some biochemical markers. Let me get some indicators of how healthy you are, whether you are uh, digesting food properly or not, whether your liver is congested or not, whether your hormones are out of balance or in balance, and so on and so on. So I learned to use all these markers. And I was getting people to do more natural things, take control, yeah. like go to bed on time and exercise. And, you know, I, I struggled with diet for a while until I came on to metabolic typing. And that's when I learned about that macronutrient ratio is different and that you better dial it in. You, if you get that dialed in, you're going to produce energy on a cellular level at the right rate, quality, quantity. Um, and guess what? Cells don't need to be taught what their job is. They have an innate intelligence that knows what, I know what my job is, just feed me, right? Please, let me produce fuel so that I can do my job. It knows if it's an adrenal cell or testicle cell, you know, or brain cell or muscle cell, yeah. skin cells. And so that's the beauty of working with the innate intelligence is that we just want to, we want to coach up function. This is a common saying in, in my chart. Coach up function, nurture, working on getting things to be balanced. Remember, we've got the data, we've got the measure. Um, while we coach down the contributors to metabolic chaos, the bad environment, the bad food, the bad people around you, the um, chemicals, and uh, even things your own body makes can be very distressful to the body. So, coach up function, coach down contributors to metabolic chaos, and guess what? Let the chips fall where they may, because you trust that innate intelligence. Yes. And we're, the only place that it doesn't work is if they have a real, yeah. honest to goodness, true medical condition, yeah. like cancer or something. Right. You know, and, right. and in which case, I'm fine being the junior partner to some oncologist that wants to treat that or cut that thing out well you know we're trying to work on everything else around the edges mm -hmm. and sometimes when you work around the edges long enough mm -hmm. that thing still there, kind of disappears goes away yeah yeah, yeah. I, I love what you're talking about innate intelligence i'm yeah, very I i'd say tapped into that and i yeah. i trust it and it, it's yeah it's almost been a playful yeah. thing i'm like i might be just making stuff up or this could be real so i in, in my meditative practice i ask my body what it needs almost every single day and i'll hear all sorts of things and i'm like okay and i'll just entertain it and just try it and it's been Amazing. I've had, you know, I was getting some low mood in the middle of winter one time and I heard bee vitamins and I'm like, I'm probably just making stuff up, but I'm just going to play with it and see and wow, like I needed yeah. those, you know, and, yeah. and and when I'm sick, sometimes I'll, I'm like, okay, what do you guys need? Because like what I, you know, I, I, I could just be being playful, making things up, but I hear this like, we know how we work, us immune cells and your bodies and like, we know you don't totally know how we work, so if you can just listen to what we're trying to tell you, that would be awesome. So, yeah. water, sleep, go for a walk, blow the snot out of your nose, sleep, you know, like, and, and it's that, to me, is like that innate intelligence that you're talking about, and as we ask, and I think that's why we have to have a relationship with our bodies, like, I look at my body as like little sentient beings, all these little millions, trillions of, you know, and talking to me, we're in, in a you know, not psycho way, but it really yeah. though, it is talking to us and saying, hey, like you're tired. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm going to listen to that and like not be like, oh, body, why are you tired? Right. And so I'm curious how much you see this because I say often, I feel like sometimes I give people scientific reasons that their intuition was right or giving them permission to like sleep mm -hmm. like it's okay that your body is asking for 10 hours of sleep yeah. let's listen to that you know right. and I, have you run into any of that kind of thing in your line of work where well which part of what you said <laughs> uh, where there people are kind of like denying or not listening oh, to yeah. what their body's sure. trying to tell them yes and yes of that, course so, yeah. so I, I think we mentioned already that uh, some level of self-awareness and understanding that this ain't normal. Yeah. 
Even though you've been told yeah. the blood work looks normal. Yeah, accepting If that. you think it's not normal, probably yeah. probably not, excuse me. Yeah. And so, um, me, I'm a systems guy. Yeah. So I can't address it from every angle. And you know, there's, here at this conference, there's 30 different biohackers. I don't know which one's gonna help me. Right. You know, I mean, I don't have a lot of health problems, but I'd like to have, you know, a lot of longevity and anti-aging and not, mm -hmm. And, and so I'm always looking for, for edges and angles and levers and, and things I can use. But the only way I would know for sure is looking at our lab work because uh, no symptoms is actually a dangerous state. It's like, I feel fine, bam! You know, all of a sudden you got cancer or um, a fatal heart attack or a heart attack, you know, some kind of... So you can feel fine and not be fine. That's why the biomarkers are important. Yeah, check in. No, yeah, so, yeah, so I'm not, so the way I put it at a lecture I did this morning was that, um, you know, there's a gap between unwell and well, yeah. sick and not sick. And our practitioners that I teach, we get people, help them get from sick to not sick. Mm -hmm. Now here at a biohacker convention, you get plenty of people who are not sick. They don't want to go from sick to not sick. They want to go from not sick to superhuman. Mm -hmm. You know, oh, you can live to be 180, mm -hmm. maybe 120. I, I read a book that I kind of believe, like maybe, not that anyone wants to, they say. Yeah. You know, but so the difference between sick and not sick is a huge gap. Yeah. And the difference between not sick and superhuman, yeah. which we all would like, is also a big gap. But the tools, I would contend, are the same tools yeah. to get there. And it's paying attention and it's living clean and right, and I have the DRESS protocol for that, the D-R-E-S-S, which is diet, metabolic type, the uh, rest, sleep, and rest your body, and rest your emotions, and things, get all the juices flowing. Um, exercise, of course, goes without saying. Sitting is the new smoking. Um, the two S's in D-R-E-S-S -S is stress reduction and supplementation, yeah. and I will, until I find something better, continue to yeah. harp on that and, and preach that, if you will. Um, we've been teaching practitioners around the world. We have over 4,000 in 50 countries who have learned, uh, get the data, yeah. the hormone immune digestion detoxification, you know, the hidden yeah. acronym I gave you on um, what to look for, and then apply the general principles of health building. And this is something I'm known for saying. The general principles of health building will outperform specific treatments. Because specific treatment is, uh, you know, a physician or practitioner might run a test based on what it sounds like. It sounds like thyroid. So, it sounds like thyroid. You know, there's a cluster of symptoms that's right. fairly reliable. Right. And it sounds like thyroid. You know, run a thyroid test. Boy, I'm smart. It's your thyroid. <laughs> Here's your medication, don't worry, everything's gonna be okay. We're gonna get those numbers on the paper where we want them. Well, that's treating the paper. That's not treating the whole person. And the minute you diagnose and treat specifics, you're leaving all this other stuff off the table. We don't leave anything off the table that we could handle and, and, and make discoveries about. So we cannot perform yeah. the specific treatment. Model. Yeah, because everything you just discussed in that DRESS principle acronym is I mean, for me, what I see, lead, I mean, there's a lot of things that can lead to hypothyroidism, but generally speaking, the hype, I've had a lot of hypothyroid clients, and they're almost always stressed to the max, and then they start over-exercising because they've gained a bunch of weight, so now they're stressing even more. They're dieting. They're, like, starving themselves. So it's yeah. more stress, right. and then it just gets worse and worse and worse, and so as we, whew, like, that's the scariest thing in the world, I think, for a hypothyroid client is to be like, we got to ease up. We got to sleep a whole bunch, and we got to take the stress off, and we got to, you know, you can exercise exercise but not high intensity interval training for two and a half hours like we gotta calm yeah. you know and and everything that you said to me in that and that dress acronym covers like what leads to healing from something like that pretty much you know maybe there's some yeah. toxins or gut issues you know, some things you can address but you're right people come up with uh, with uh, things to add to the dress program uh, what about this? That usually they'll fall under some kind of stress reduction. Yeah. So what isn't diet True. or rest or True. exercise or supplements? You can kind of categorize as well. It's a stressor. It's toxins. They're a right. stressor. The the foods you're sensitive to. That's a stressor. Or By the way, cover this. Yeah. And so 
but mental yeah, emotional. Yeah. Our job is to overcome yeah. the yeah. obstacles yeah. to healing. Yeah. Something's preventing yeah. you from healing, right? We know the cell, the body wants to be healthy. The right. cells have an intelligence. It. What's the obstacle to healing? It could be a number of things. You mentioned deficiencies. I've, I've studied the environment thoroughly. Um, but even things locked in the mind and emotions of the person, like they just don't believe enough that any of this stuff matters and that life doesn't matter and they have no purpose and they just don't seem to be motivated and and that's pretty hard to deal with actually yeah. we started with you got to be a seeker yeah yes yeah um okay supplements because you do have a background in, in the environment yeah and i know a, a few lot. things I, I just i just went out and actually toured a regenerative farm out in ohio where they have a lab on their actual farm where they're testing the mineral content yeah. of their plants they started out with chefs they were just trying to make good tasting plants for chefs they will uh, and in the process of making excellent tasting vegetables yeah of course they became more nutrient dense and it pushed them into high quality soils right so they're all about soil health and i'm you know i hear people say and i'm sure you do too oh now i have to take so i have to take supplements do i really need to take supplements and i kind of went on this little tangent myself for a little while i was a supplement person and then i was like i can get everything i need through food and then i was like and then I got back on my supplements that I've tested for and know that I need. And I was like, I'm never stopping. And I looked at the, you know, we, I did a tour of the lab and they bought vegetables from the grocery store and then they compared the mineral content of theirs. And when I looked at the mineral content, like the sodium was really low. Two of them had no selenium at all. It didn't even show up, you know, and, and, and it was dramatically lower on all sorts of minerals in these plants. And so I was wondering if you could speak on do people need to supplement in terms of, you know, yes. organic? Can I just eat organic, nutrient-dense variety foods and get everything I need? What are your thoughts? My thoughts are that the organic foods are great because you can avoid herbicides and pesticides and insecticides and rodenticides and all the crap that they put on food and in the processing. So that's why you eat organic. But does it have any more minerals than the next food? It doesn't, that's not a qualifier for organic. Organic right. just means pesticide free, yeah. basically, oh chemical free. Right. Now, if they've also been using manure, like my brother and I, we were required by my grandfather every weekend to go to the neighbor's farm, clean up their, stall, their horse stalls, bring that so horse awesome. stuff back, mix it into his compost so pile, awesome. so that we were growing our vegetables in rich, nutrient dense, and he knew all about the nitrogen and the potassium and the different things and the pH levels and stuff like that. So I think we ate really nutrient dense foods, probably good for our metabolic type. I mean, uh, you know, we're, we're basically English, Irish, and we were living in Canada and eating, I, I think they're similar enough. But um, but I don't know if, if so, so that's a basis. Like you've got to assume that, you know, Organic means pesticide free, that's a good place to start. Right. As to whether it's actually got all the minerals and right. vitamins and essential fatty acids and, and phytonutrients and trace elements and antioxidants in it, right. I don't know. You, you, without the testing and uh, yeah. getting a really good variety of food together, it's pretty hard to tell these days. And so we do the best that we can. My wife and I grow our own vegetables. And I do, do check, I do put minerals into the water because I'm growing them hydroponically. Oh, okay. So I can control yeah. the water yeah. uh, with the minerals mm -hmm. and the pH levels. You can bring the pH down. And, uh, man, are they good tasting. Yeah. Those tomatoes taste like granddad's potatoes. I mean tomatoes because yeah. the ones in the store aren't tasting that way. Oh my gosh, when I went to this regenerative farm, they, they had this plate of all these heirloom little tomatoes. And they had salt for me, which I normally love salt on my tomatoes. But as I ate one of the tomatoes, I was like, there. It was like the saltiest tomato I'd ever had. I was like, there's no way I would need to you add salt, need salt to it. It was like yeah. pretty acidic, actually, like it, but in a good way, you know. Yeah. And it, it was eye-opening for me. I was like, yeah. wow, like this is how they're supposed to taste. Okay, got it. It actually kind of made me sad because they gave me this huge box of food, and I was in this little, you know, condo where they had, a, yeah. you know, I could cook it all, but it, they were so flavorful. It made me sad because I was like, no wonder people don't like vegetables because they don't even taste like they're supposed to because they yeah. don't have the right mineral content, the right yeah. nutrient density, you know? Um, well, I was just going to say, tomatoes actually a fruit, 
it's not a vegetable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when you grow it right with the right um, minerals and, and pH levels in the water, things like that, it tastes like a fruit. It's as good yeah. as eating a little it's cherry delicious. or apple, or yeah. it's, it's sweet, it's delicious, it's good, flavorful. So it's amazing. The last thing I wanted to ask you was like, I know it's probably like you're gonna say it depends, but I thought I'd ask you. It if depends. You, if you <laughs> if you had to pick, like these are lab tests that like you really should check in on in yourself, and you had to just pick like top tests. What would you say? I know it's always, it depends on what the problem is, and I get it, but big hitters. Hormone test for sure, because with the amount of stress you're under today, you can test your stress hormones. So that's really critical. Yeah. But the stress hormones are and especially cortisol and DHEA being out of balance, is going to lead to a lowered immune system. So you want to check at least your secretory IgA. That's the main uh, defense mechanism in the gut, and the gut's most of your defense mechanism. So uh, the hormones, secretory IgA, I would look for dysbiosis. Uh, the With form, a stool analysis? No, that would or? be uh, urine. Okay. And so okay. then uh, liver congestion, urine, uh, excessive oxidative stress, urine. By the way, these are, dry, these are tests you do at home. Uh, they're not expensive, and any, anyone can run them. And remember what I said, if you want to be in control of your health, get the data right. and get yourself. So if, if you don't know how to get the labs done, come to an FDN practitioner, we'll get it done for you. Um, I would look for other things, of course, leaky gut, um, the, the function of the gut, there's markers, I won't go through the names because they're, they just confuse people. Um, but also bugs, pathology, parasites, bacteria, funguses, viruses. And last but not least, I would never leave it out of a comprehensive testing, would be food sensitivities. Because yeah. everyone has some. If you're eating them, you're basically creating metabolic chaos. Right. Okay, those are big hitters. Great. Thank yeah. you. Thank you so yeah. much. Thank you for what you've